Um, I went to three universities. Um, I went. I began my university studies at the University of British Columbia, and then I switched over to finish my degree at Université Laval in Quebec City, and then I did graduate work um, in creative writing at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore. I was uh, one of those students who liked what he liked and didn't do quite so well at the things that he didn't like. Um, I loved uh, linguistics, uh, anthropology, English, French, uh, Spanish, uh, economics turned me on as well. I wasn't so great at calculus and stats, but had to take some of that as well. Um, on the whole, I was an eager student. Uh, I really wanted to learn and to grow. And also, I went to university as an undergrad in the 1970s, and people weren't so worried about degrees or uh, what the degree would bring them in the way of economic uh, benefits. And jobs were still a plenty, and people weren't so stressed out about whether they'd get a job. We kind of knew we would. And uh, as a result, I was able to just focus on a liberal arts education and learn a lot without worrying too much about the applicability of my studies. And in the long run, I think that actually served me quite well in the job market. Did I always know I'd go to university? Absolutely, yes. Um, my father and mother went to university, and my grandfather and great-grandfather went, and on my father's side, of course, it's an African-American family that, that privileged education and believed that education was the only way sort of to escape the scourge of racism. And so it was just understood from my birth that I would go to university. Of course, conveniently, my brother, older brother, drops out of high school to become a singer-songwriter, and that provoked a lot of stress in the family. But yes, I knew as a studious middle child that I would always go to university. <laughs> I've loved coming to Guelph. I've been here now for about a year and a half, and the students on the whole, you know, have been friendly, engaged. Almost all of them that I meet really want to learn and to become better writers. They seem motivated. Uh, some of them, you know, are stronger. Some of them are weaker, but they seem to all come to class or almost all really wanting to improve and to learn and to grow. Also, for the most part, there's been a spirit of kindness in my classes. and uh, I'm teaching classes where students are reading and commenting on each other's work. There'd be lots of room for nastiness. For, there would be lots of room for nastiness there, but it's not coming out. For the most part, students are very thoughtful and considerate in speaking to others in the ways that they'd want to be spoken to. It's actually quite hard to turn your mind to a body of complex literature and to try to get your head around it, to understand it, to make sense of it, to sort of situate it in the context of your own life, even if that book took place 300 years ago, you have to look for connections. And it's also extremely hard to write creatively. To write well creatively is a huge challenge, and even those of us who are published writers continue to find it a big challenge with each new book. And so I feel that if a student can come into a class that I teach and exit the class being more capable as a writer, it will serve them in innumerable ways. Most of the people I teach don't aspire to become professional writers. They're just trying their hand at creative writing the way I might have tried my hand at anthropology. It didn't mean I was necessarily going to become an anthropologist. But I do believe that to become more capable on the page and know how to wield that pen more effectively can make a huge difference um, in the job market. You know, when you're advocating for your child and writing a letter to the principal of your junior high school, there are many, many ways in which uh, the ability to write clearly and to express yourself orally and on papers is absolutely critical. And uh, not to mention the benefits that will come to your children if you can teach them to communicate well. So uh, I feel that it's hugely important for students to learn how to express themselves well and to think critically. And you learn to do that in the arts. When I help students learn how to critique each other's work, one of the key things is to suspend as much as possible your own personal predilections and preferences and to examine the student's work according to its, it on its own terms rather than wishing that it were something that you would write or that you could edit. And so just putting yourself, sort of setting yourself out of the picture and learning to look at somebody else's writing and to help them become better writers, which is one of the things that my students do, is actually an incredible exercise in empathy and thought and maturity. What am I working on? Well, I'm working on a lot of student writing, of course, and that's really exciting to step into that. And I will say that I do believe that as a creative writer who teaches creative writing, it's almost useless to stand up and give an hour-long lecture. 
um, about how to write better. And even if you gave the most brilliant lecture in the history of the world, the people who heard it would probably not become better writers after they left the room. And so the only way to really help a student become a more effective writer creatively is to ask them to write a first draft and then to roll up your sleeves and look at that first draft with them to make a bunch of suggestions and send them back to the drawing board. And it's in revising, much as they are loath to do it, but it's in revising that they become, in my view, better writers and it's helping them learn how to revise that really the teaching skills are, are at their most useful. So I try to encourage students to do a lot of revising. But as for what I'm working on myself these days as an artist, I'm working on my 11th book, which would be my fifth novel, which is a novel about the Alaska Highway. In a nutshell, um, 5,000 African-American soldiers were brought up from the Deep South after Pearl Harbor was bombed to help build the Alaska Highway through northern British Columbia, Yukon, and Alaska during the Second World War. It was extremely difficult, dangerous, uh, and the conditions were oppressive in the summer and in the winter. And these soldiers were segregated racially and worked on indigenous lands as they built this massive a uh, 3,000 kilometer highway through northern BC, Yukon, and Alaska. It's a story that involves the intermingling of black, indigenous, uh, and white cultures. It also involves a great deal of paranoia about the potential of the Japanese army to invade uh, North America through Alaska, which didn't happen, but which was feared. So I'm writing a novel about a black engineer from the Deep South who comes up to be uh, racially segregated and to help build uh, the Alaska Highway through Yukon in 1942. Well, I think one of the most important things to do uh, when you're growing up and growing into adulthood and studying is to get outside of your zone of comfort and to learn about things that you didn't know about when you were 6 or 10 or 16. And one of the best ways to do that is to travel. Whether it's doing a junior year abroad or whether it's taking a volunteer position, you know, in some far-flung country for two months or, or longer, or whether it's moving to northern Canada and doing something interesting there. I'm not so much talking about tourist travel in a five-star hotel, but dislocating yourself and going to a place where you're not in control of everything and where you really, you really feel like an outsider is a tremendous thing to do to increase your maturity and vision. And also, most people who do travel in a meaningful way come back much more purposeful about the things they want to do and study, the kind of work they'd like to pursue. They just come back kind of more grounded in their own interests. And the, the business of being away helps you see yourself in your own country better. And so uh, one word of advice I'd offer that's not strictly academic but more of a lifestyle is, is to try to get outside of your zone of comfort and to do something like travel as a volunteer or study in some place that you haven't been before.